I first reviewed the original Miku Baby monitor nearly two years ago, and let's just say my feelings about that monitor were mixed. Now, almost two years later, Miku has launched the Miku Pro, and it comes with a whole bevy of upgrades. So in this Miku Pro Baby Monitor review, I'll cover all of those upgrades from the original model and tell you why this monitor is rapidly becoming one of the most dynamic Wi-Fi monitors on the market. Hey, this is John with Fathercraft, where we review baby and kid gear and create online courses for new parents to help make this whole parenting thing just a bit easier. So like I said, there are a bunch of exciting upgrades and features to cover, but first, <laughs> no big deal, but we are going to be giving away a brand new Miku Pro. So be sure to tune in until the end to find out how you can win. Right, let's do a little unboxing here. All right, if I can open, how do you, how do you open this? Ah, there we go. All right, you've got the monitor, you've got the quick start guide, the power cables with the super bespoke leather cable wrap, the cable management system, the wall mount anchors and screws. You've got a standard screwdriver that you can use to pry out this super cute Miku golf pencil, the wall mount, the power brick, and a tape measure. All right, let's take a look at the internal components of the Miku Pro starting off with the camera sensor. The nearly one and a third inch five megapixel camera sensor has more than doubled in size from the original model, allowing for a super crisp 1080p resolution. The field of view has expanded up to 140 degrees from the original 130 degrees. On top of that, you can pinch to zoom on the feed within the app, which is extremely beneficial. The internal processing array has all been upgraded as well, but I won't try to pretend to know how these chips work, so I'll just list them here on the screen for you. But the takeaway here is that these have all been upgraded. So taking a look at the body of the camera, all I can say is <laughs> hubba hubba. I uh, actually, I don't know if I can say that. Anyway, this is one slick looking camera. It's got this modern and clean look and feel and to me definitely matches aesthetically with the high-end internal tech that Miku Pro utilizes. Now, obviously this is not anywhere near the most important aspect of a baby monitor, but still, <laughs> it looks good. The audio coming out of this monitor is top notch and that's in large part due to the updated dual Ole Wolf speaker system. This high def system can pump out some seriously powerful sound um, and actually would in a pinch make for a suitable replacement for my Sonos speakers when I'm entertaining the local children. That's weird, I, you know, because I have kids. Actually, we can't have kids <laughs> come over anyway, just COVID. But. When it comes to mounting the Miku Pro, you've got three options, wall mount, surface mount, or floor stand mount. So a good number of choices here. Once the camera is mounted, you can swivel the camera body to ensure you're getting the proper angle, which is super convenient. The Miku app has gotten a bad rap in the past, and in my opinion, rightly so. And that was mainly due to some significant connection issues. Now that said, the current version of the app has undergone some significant improvements. And a lot of these issues I experienced in the past, like these connection issues, no longer exist. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the app. You've got your standard features like background audio, push to talk, snapshots, and a quick access menu for toggling on and off breathing monitoring, alarms, music, and standby mode. The music and white noise options within the app are super impressive, and I'm still working my way through the Spotify-esque library, but I'd have to say so far, my favorite track is Celestial Etheria. You know, sometimes I'll just light a candle, dim the lights, just mellow out to Celestial Etheria, and pretend life isn't... Well, hello. Ugh. I'm using my phone for the... Uh teleprompter here, and if I wasn't, I'd be able to tell you that Calvin got up using the Miku app, but I guess we'll pause it. Do you want a snack? Okay. All right, where were we? As I was saying, sometimes I'll just dim the lights, light a candle, and you know, just mellow out to celestial etheria and pretend that life isn't f***ing crazy. And that works for about five minutes or so, and then yeah! reality comes crashing back down. Anyway, let's talk about breathing monitoring. Miku is able to monitor breathing without the use of wearables due to its sensor fusion technology. And this tech is straight out of Star Trek, but also not to be confused with smell vision which tells you when there's a dirty diaper. So what is sensor fusion technology? At a high level, sensor fusion is an AI platform equipped with radar technology, imaging processing, and audio and light monitoring sensors. So it combines these optical and wireless sensing apparatuses with powerful signal processing to accurately monitor breathing patterns. And if you're wondering, yeah, I did come up with all that on my own. But for you lay people out there, it basically fuses these sensors to tell you stuff about your baby's breathing. This technology paired with the camera's super powerful internal processors allow Miku to monitor breathing, like I said, in real time and without the use of wearables, which is unique in the Wi-Fi baby monitor world. 
Now, in case you were wondering how accurate the breathing monitoring is, Miku's technology has been validated in a third-party IRB-approved clinical study where it was compared against worn medical-grade equipment and proven to be just as accurate. So I would say that gives you a pretty solid idea that yes, Miku's breathing monitoring is quite accurate. All right, let's talk about sleep analytics. The sleep analytics tab provides historical sleep data detailing information around how your baby slept at night and during naps. The night summary section isolates information about your baby's previous night of sleep and includes data around when your baby was sleeping, depicted in this blue line, when there was movement, depicted in yellow, and when there was no movement, depicted in orange. It also tells you how long your baby slept, what time she went to bed, what time she woke up, how long it took her to fall asleep, and overall sleep quality. You can also see a weekly view of the information I just mentioned by tapping on trends. This gives you a pretty nice at a glance look at how your baby is sleeping. At the bottom of this tab, you'll find the daily snapshot. This tells you what your baby's average breathing rate was, the average room temperature, and the average humidity level. Now, in my opinion, the Nanit Pro Sleep Analytics is the gold standard with its dashboards and customized sleep tips, but Miku is definitely catching up. And I love that the Miku provides unlimited sleep history for free, whereas the Nanit Pro requires a sleep insights package that costs 300 bucks a year to get unlimited access to the same sleep history. Moving on to the activity tab, you'll find short clips of all the different events that took place as your baby was asleep. The default view is this rolling timeline view that you can scrub through, or you can select a list view by tapping on the list view icon. Now within the settings tab, you can uh, toggle on and off different notifications. So you can be alerted when Miku detects no movement, when it detects sounds, or when your baby fell asleep, or when she woke up. You can further customize the sound and asleep and awake alerts by adjusting the sensitivity levels. One notification that the Miku Pro does not have is motion notification, similar to what's available with the Nanit Pro, which is a bit of a miss in my opinion. With the Nanit Pro, you can set what's called a motion area, and when anything enters that area, an alert notification is triggered. This is extremely helpful, especially as your baby gets older and is no longer in the crib. For instance, Calvin loves to sneak out of his bed and when he enters the motion area, I get a notification letting me know I need to drag his ass back to bed. <laughs> just kidding, I'm too lazy for all that. I'll just kindly tell him through the two-way audio feature to get his happy butt back in bed so I can continue to enjoy my pint of Ben and Jerry's. Calvin, kindly return your happy butt back to bed. Thank you. So overall, the app is quite useful and provides a ton of valuable features, especially as it relates to sleep analytics. And again, it's definitely not as robust as the Nanit Pro app with its boatload of customizable notifications and built-in sleep coach, but still fairly solid. We actually just did a full review of the Nanit Pro and you can find a link to that review in the description below. All right, so who is the Miku Pro for? And is it right for you? Honestly, it all boils down to understanding what features within a baby monitor are most important to you. And this is true for any baby monitor you're considering purchasing but it's not an easy task to take on yourself. There are a ton of options, each of which has their pros and cons, but you can breathe easy <laughs> because we've got you covered. Head to fathercraft.com showdown to get a free copy of our baby monitors cheat sheet guide. It's got all the information you need to arm yourself in order to make the right buying decision based on the features that are most important to you. But overall, in my opinion, the Miku Pro will fit the needs of like 99% of parents looking to purchase a baby monitor. Especially if you're into super cool tech, state-of-the-art breathing monitoring, and having an extremely sharp 1080p video resolution, then you're not going to be disappointed if you go with the Miku Pro. Now, there are a couple minor details that I'm hoping get updated in a future app update. One, uh, it would be great to be able to zoom in on the sleep summary timeline to get an idea of when certain events happened. Right now, you just see an overall view. Also, every time you open the app, the audio feed is defaulted to on. So if Calvin is rocking out to Danny Boy, the folks I'm on the phone with get a nice earful. So it would be cool if the sound would default to the last setting you enabled prior to closing the app. Plus, the audio feed is either background audio on or audio off, meaning if you turn the audio on, you're toggling the background audio on as well. Again, these are all small things. Uh, overall, the app has functioned really nicely. Um, and working really well. And obviously there's no one baby monitor that rules them all. Whether it's the Nanit Pro or the Cubo AI Plus, you're going to find some flaws. But I think in terms of what this baby monitor has to offer, the Miku Pro stacks up quite nicely compared to its competitors. So if you want more baby monitor reviews, be sure to go to fathercraft.com monitors to find our ever expanding repository. And if you don't see a review on a particular baby monitor you're interested in, let me know in the comments and we'll see about rectifying that situation. All right, <laughs> giveaway time. All right, listen closely because this is not at all complicated. 
Step one, if you like the video, well, go ahead and like the video. Two, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And three, and this is mainly so we can get in touch with the winner. And so also you can quite frankly join our kick-ass mailing list. Head on over to fathercraft.com slash win to let us know you've accomplished step two. All right, people. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Would you like to say hello? Come here. Ugh.